So let's move a little bit around here. You can move around the chairs if you feel more comfortable. Yeah? I am not the one providing interpretation. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So welcome everyone. So this is the REN session. So for the people who don't know what REN is, that means Wikipedia in Residence Network. That's a user group which was created a few years in the past. I was not there at that time, so I don't know. Maybe because somebody can tell us the story. But in very short, that's a user group that's an official affiliate. Uh, and it's get sort of a mix of people who are currently or wannabe or former Wikipedia in residence which means people who are currently working in institutions, which is a vague term, in fact, doing stuff related to Wikimedia. So every year we do an event during Wikimania just to talk about the thing. If I'm not wrong, there are three sessions during Wikimania on the topic. So there was one from, or there is one from Jake. Uh, there is also one tomorrow afternoon with Connor. Where's Connor? In the other room. OK. So what we agreed with is that since there are three sessions, it's a bit weird. So we'll stay rather general here. And if there are all things that you want to go more in depth, it can be done tomorrow afternoon. All right? Good. So just a little show of hand. Who is currently a Wikipedia in residence? And show your hands. About a third of the people. And I presume most of the other ones do not know anything about what it is. Right? Or, or you have been. <laughs> or former. OK, are there some people who know nothing about the topic? Are there some who want to become Wikipedia residents and don't really know how, how to do it? I see Nanour. Come over, Nanour. <laughs> A seat at the front so we can, you know, embrace you. Not <laughs> audience, yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, to make it shortly, there is a Telegram user group. Um, if you don't know it, I will, I, we can share it afterwards. There's also a mailing list, which is not super active, but decently active. There's some stuff being published from time to time. And there is a page on a bunch of pages on Meta as well to know about the topic. So in the future, if you want to know anything about the topic, Telegram channel, mailing lists, and um, some wiki pages on Meta. I am not the contact of the user group. I actually am not sure who are the official contact of the user group, and that's a big point. Is all the contact members of the user group in this room? I think it's Andrew, and maybe Lane. Or Richard? It's like those people who run everything. Yeah, and exactly. So Andrew is in the lightning talks, and I don't know where Lane and <laughs> are, so we manage without them. But I might suggest something, and we can start afterwards. Uh, it seems that the, uh, we have, <coughs> let's be bold, we haven't done any uh, online meeting for about two years now, I think. So as far as I know, there is only one meeting per year, which is at Wikimania. That's not much. And also, we haven't submitted any annual report last year. So that means we are at, out of compliance. In the end, we don't really care, because the Wikimedia Foundation is not going to kick us. What? We exist anyway. But if there are good people who would like to actually get involved, uh, write uh, something that would, looks like a report, or actually activate some meetings, that's the moment to do it, I think. OK? OK, is there anyone who would like to explain a little bit more what the Wikipedia Residence Network is? Maybe some historical people? You do. So present yourself quickly as well. Hi, I'm Jamie Flood. I'm, the, I'm a Wikipedia in residence, but my title is Senior Wikipedian. 
I'm the only one in the world. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, so, someone like came up to me at Wiki Conference North America and told me that, and I left. But uh, <laughs> I'm also an outreach coordinator with the United States Department of Agriculture, National Agricultural Library. I've been with Wren for a couple years. Uh, I know Andrew and Lane and other uh, Wikipedians and residents a few years ago came together to start the network just so we would have some representation. Uh, Wikipedia and residents, uh, the position itself is kind of contested sometimes because it's unclear, you know, can we edit, should we edit, uh, are we adequately expressing our conflicts of interest, and are we abiding by that in the terms of service? And so that was really what it was, was to come together for us to have a, a group of people that represented us and could make uh, materials and resources for uh, other Wikimedians and residents, because that's the other thing. This job looks different across every institution, and an institution that wants to have one doesn't know what that looks like. And so uh, I think that's something we're still kind of working on, is to create some documentation to help institutions create this kind of position. And I know Jake is probably working the hardest of any of us on that, and I know he's talking about that in what his session around it. Um, and yeah, that was really it. It's really an advocacy organization for ourselves so we can be represented and we can communicate better with the Wikimedia Foundation and with those who are interested and with institutions that are interested. Thanks. I think one of the very old Wikipedia residents is you, Martin, probably. Oh, thanks a lot. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't mean you were old, and uh, <clears throat> I'm probably slightly older than you. No, but uh, as an experienced person, uh, were you present when you create the, the the brand was created? Uh, I must have been. I might, I might be. So, and and if you were at the beginning, please explain a little bit on top of that. I don't know if I was there at the inception of Ren. Oh. Yield to someone. <laughs> and please remember to introduce yourself for the others. Hi, I'm Michelle. I currently work at Wikimedia Netherlands, and I have to dig in my memory, but I think the Wikimedia Residence Exchange Network was uh, founded at uh, uh, Wikimedia in Montreal, uh, Canada, where we all had a Bird of the Feather session, Wikimedians, and we thought, well, it's about time we would have a user group, so we had to go and talk to the people who define who gets to make a user group and everything. And um, I think Richard took it from there. And um, Richard, Hi. yeah, <laughs> right? Can you take it, for, can you take it again? <laughs> the, the idea is a, a mutual support network among, among Wikimedians and residents. Um, in, react, in reaction to both to represent our interests to the Wikimedia Foundation and some of the technologies that we, we might need help support with to represent ourselves in terms of the editing communities and you know sometimes being challenged on conflict of interest and what are the appropriate policies for that um, to rep help represent ourselves in respect to the institutions that employ us you know what what, is, what, what should be required of us what are the ethics of that um, are there standard contracts that we should develop and also just to share practices and to have share discussions a lot of times you know we might uh, be asked to do a particular thing around Wikidata or something technical or to make a certain type of editathon, uh, or indeed sometimes uh, our institution might ask us something slightly ethically questionable and how do we react to that? <laughs> and this is a good, this is a good forum because you can talk to some of your peers. It's meant to be like a peer learning network. Um, yeah, and so hopefully it's been a little bit less active uh, in recent years. I've been a little bit less active myself because uh, I'm no longer Wikipedia in residence at the moment. But uh, the idea is to be this sort of peer support network for people in this sort of, it's sort of like a guild of, of people who have a similar position at different institutions. Thanks. I think guild is a good term. Uh, I'd like to ask you, don't drop the mic. <laughs> don't drop the mic. <laughs> Do you think you achieved your goals? But so it was created back in 2017. Yeah. It's a big one, I know. Did you achieve the goal? And what do you think is still needed at the moment? Maybe there are new concerns that are emerging? Yeah, I think we achieved, uh. we achieved some of the goals. We created some sense of camaraderie and, and, and peer relationships. 
Um, obviously, there are all sorts of other concerns that have, that have arisen since then, uh, particularly concerns around technology development. Um, you know, some of the tools uh, that, that some of the tools were developed, you know, by volunteers and they haven't quite lasted and that's impacted a number of our institutions and <laughs> it affected me as well in my position. Um, there's obviously a lot of other stuff that's happened, um, you know, around AI uh, and incorporating that and the different institutional interests of, uh, of, of, of different uh, folks in, in AI and how we react to that. Um, how do we react to maybe uh, Wikimedia, Wikipedia not being the exciting technology that it sometimes was once considered, and how do we make it that so again? How do we position ourselves in um, this sort of corporate uh, environment of technology as a, as a bit of an alternative? Um, so yeah, I think there are many more things that can be accomplished if we reactivate a little bit. Uh, or is there somebody who would like to reflect on what they what the benefits for them was when they became a re Wikipedia in residence? either from somebody who is currently active or was no more active for some reason. You're too new. I'll ask you afterwards. <laughs> uh-huh. The mic, where is the mic? I think you dropped this one. Well, you ask first and then you second. Oh, well, it made my career. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's the most significant thing I've ever done and will do. <laughs> Um, so it, without being, without GlamWiki as a concept, as a method to try and connect two communities and demonstrate that that could be done at a time when both communities were at best ambivalent and at most antagonistic to each other, to be able to prove that it was at least possible, um, personally, has allowed me to, has, has served the rest of my career um, because nothing I have ever done since has not been built upon the experiences and connections and values that that started. So that's been hugely valuable to me as an individual. Uh, I should note that that was a volunteer at the time and I had to quit my job and become an unpaid intern to do the Wikipedia in residence internationally. But I knew that was an investment in my, in my future just at, as an egotistical level. Um, <laughs> but that, that helped to build a, a network and a, um, a movement, which is more, that's the scalability. To your original you were the, question. We, you were the first. Yeah. yeah. Yep. To your original question of was it a success, at the institution where I was at, no. Because the definite, but I think it's a success at the level of the concept that we have a network, that we have a movement, that the acronym GLAM and the acronym Wikipedia in Residence has now grown beyond this. Um, but the, the definition of success I set myself at the time at the institution where I was, which was the British Museum, was that my role as Wikipedia in Residence would become irrelevant or no longer necessary because the to, to work myself out of a job, that the institution would take on those tasks as standard practices or accept the concept of doing wiki things as part of, just part of the normal job. Um, and I do feel that sometimes institutions get halfway there where they, they say, oh, this is really good, we like this, we'll have another Wikipedia in residence or we'll make that person permanent, which, which centralizes the power and, and and knowledge rather than distributes it. I would like to see Wikipedia in residences focusing on spreading the knowledge and spreading the, the capacity rather than centralizing it in the, a single position or a single person. The original, original concept of Wikipedia in residence, not that this is the only way to do things, but the very first idea was the position becomes permanent but the person, their first task is to help identify the next person. And their first task is to identify the next person. So you're constantly rotating through new volunteers, um, maybe getting an internship salary or whatever. But over time, the local community is flooded with people who have had the professional expertise with that place. And that place has met lots of people. 
uh, throughout the movement rather than it just becoming one person who, who owns that institution? Sorry, Sandra? Remember uh, yeah. to introduce you. <laughs> I would say my experience has been, um, I've been a week. Uh, I'm Sandra, uh, Sandra Fauconnier. I'm a user spinster, long time Wikimedian, uh, yeah, currently super active on mo mainly Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, less Wikipedia. Um, I was a Wikimedian in residence 10 years ago and seven years ago. Two, the, the two situations were interesting. Maybe there's more people here in that situation that I was not Wikipedia in a residence for one organization, but it was always a collaboration between uh, like five uh, academic libraries uh, or three local archives, etc. So it was not just one institution. Um, I, I took your question more as a personal question, like what, it, what did it mean for you or something? What was your question again? <laughs> um, what, what, what did it bring to you? Yeah. And maybe do also do you think it, it it should have included other things that you have been missing that yeah. could be added in the future. Okay, yeah. And what mm. what were the new problems that um, emerged? Yeah. Um, just personally looking at it, I found it extremely satisfying work because you know you are being paid for your hobby basically. Uh, and I found some are paid, some are not yes, paid. Just in I case. Was, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I I, ha I was lucky enough to be paid for you know for the work. I didn't do a lot of editing, but more the organizing behind it. Um, yeah, it's a combination of indeed uh, spreading the word about the projects, event organization, getting to know different organizations, cultural organizations and how they work. Um, I think a challenge has indeed been also what Liam has said. Uh, or in my, I think in general, I've seen that organizations usually see it as a one-time project. And it is this one-time thing that is being done for a year, for two years, and then it disappears again. So, yeah, I, if I look back at the two residencies I did, I think there's maybe some re remaining stuff there, but not enough. So it, that, that's maybe, yeah. But I don't know how I could have done that differently. Because I think like everyone in the room here, my core job was internal training, was, you know, teaching people how to edit. Um, second second residency was all already very much in the Wikidata times with data-driven organizations te teaching them about Wikidata, but still it didn't really catch on, I would say. So there's the, the work you do during the residency that of course some stuff ends up on Wikidata, but they do not continue doing it. So I would say that's a challenge. But But personally, I found it really enriching. It's a really enriching kind of work because yeah, you go places, you meet people, you do stuff, you combine communities. It's it's you work on interesting content. I, I also do really do it for the content. Uh, like I, yeah, it's nice to get to know. It's new often topics. a big challenge, the long term, long term effect. In fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wanted to comment. I wanted to provide an alternative perspective of what Liam said, because we've got to have some disagreements in the session, haven't we? And, and Liam knows how much I colossally admire what he did and how pivotal it was to creating the role of Wikimedia in residence. But I think we've, we're making a mistake. I think we're thinking of this job as too kind of innovative and transformative, and we'd have more success and more sustainability if it's thought of as, as a more ordinary job. Um, because we're talking about, oh, transforming the whole organization, training the rest of the staff to make the staff wiki familiar. But the, the small organizations, uh, so as background, I'm Martin, I, I'm on my fourth Wikimedia in residence role. The first three were time limited. And now I'm in one which is ongoing, is indefinite. I'm definitely part of the organization. Um, and I mean, it's a small organization I work with. And say they have a lawyer. Now, the lawyer doesn't try to make all the other staff lawyers. The lawyer is, a, is the locus of legal expertise and maybe tells other people what they can and can't do legally, but doesn't seek to make the other staff lawyers. There's a, there's a web developer, and that, that doesn't try to teach the rest of the staff CSS. They are the locus of CSS expertise. And so the organization is a set of people with different responsibilities, different expertise. What I'm selling is my Wikipedia expertise, and that's recognized as a, a, a part of what the organization does. Because I've been able to get a milestone or get some impressive results, 
um, I've been very lucky and, and fortunate and privileged in the, the clients I get to work with, um, I've become established as the person who like, brings the cultural content of my employer to a truly vast audience. And I'm trusted to do that and trusted to advise the rest of the team on what's possible and not, and they advise me on uh, so things. So I'm doing a more conventional job. And um, when I, in the past I've tried to do this transformative thing, oh, I'm going to you know, change the organization from the inside. Well, people have their own responsibility, their own deadlines, their own skills. They've got jammed up timetables. You can't get it's a bit arrogant to go in and say, well, you're doing your job and you have your expertise, but you should have some of my expertise as well. And you should make time to learn the things that I know. Well, do uh, remember to introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Federico Nemo. I was, I guess, the first Wikimedian in residence in Italy, and I agree with both in a sense that, uh, at least for me, the long term effect of the residency at uh, Fondazione Bake has been training the staff. Most of that staff has left the that or specific organization, and they're now editing Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects in other organizations without us even having to to help them so we we they became the wikimedians in residence in other organizations um of course this was a very peculiar case of a library digital library which was very much interested in open data and so on so uh, an extremely special case uh where i had a lot of organizational support but again, they turned Wikimedians because it helped them make their job easier. Not, it was not something on top of what they were doing, they were, because they were already doing authority control, for example, uh, on, uh, and doing it with the help of Wikidata actually saved them time, um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or, ask, or finding ways to do things with uh, scripts and bots the way we do it on uh, on Wikimedia projects uh, made them much faster also at some of their usually librarian tasks so in some cases it, it is uh, appropriate to convert um, in this case half of the organization into Wikimedian in <laughs> Wikimedians so that's satisfactory I'm going to ask to uh, to Ah, oh, yeah, I see you cannot resist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree with Federico. I think it comes personally somewhere in the middle. Uh, I've been at NAL for five years, and my role is kind of to integrate editing sometimes. Uh, my I was brought on because our current undersecretary of agriculture uh, sees Wikipedia as a way of extending USDA's mission of sharing science with the people. And so I work with scientists to write Wikipedia articles around the things that they work on, mycotoxins, uh, you know, research, um, uh, different diseases and stuff like that. And so I, I'm not out to make anyone a Wikipedian. I think some people are and should be. I think this is a good role to have um, to train the next generation of Wikipedians from and to have um, interns and stuff through. But my role is to just help people integrate. And like our um, metadata librarians use Wikidata more and more. We're trying to crosswalk uh, our catalog with Wikidata so other agricultural librarians can use our uh, metadata if for their catalogs. And so it's just stuff like that. I think there's a balance, and personally, this job means a lot to me. It changed my whole life. It's why I'm a librarian now, because I got to go and work in a librarian as a Wikipedian, and I loved it, and I like, and I bring those two together now because I'm passionate about sharing knowledge, and I think that's one of the ways that my like personal beliefs align with NAL's mission is to share share information and oh, share it more broadly because at least at my institution, it's hard to access my information f from Google. It's hard to access the catalog. And because we upload things to Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons, it makes things more accessible. And how great is that? I'd like to um, raise uh, another topic, which I'm sure some people might be interested in, is how do we actually become a Wikipedia in residence, uh -huh. or do we have a new job, 
a second one. So I'm going to take just a, a tiny example for us, and then we can talk about maybe some of the of the activities that Wikimedia France might be one, and maybe how you became. So in our case, um, in my case, I'm working part-time for WIPO, so that's the World Intellectual Property Rights Organization. And uh, the relationship with the UN was actually started, I don't know if John is here? I don't think so. So John Cummings, you might know him, he has been trying to work for years at UNESCO, with UNESCO. Uh, he has worked for years for UNESCO, and then he created, uh, well, relationship with the people over there, and in the end he started working for a short contract for WIPO, and it was only by l hearing, right? It was not, there was nothing being published officially. It was just suggesting a new name. So he suggested two names at some point. Isla was one of them. There was also Sherry. So they worked for three months, I think, yeah. roughly. And then they suggested, my, well, Isla suggested my name. So I became, I joined WIPO. I worked for one year for them. And they wanted some more languages. So in turn, I suggested well, I contacted Wikimedia Mexico, yeah. and they suggested his name. So for me, my relationship was asking to a chapter, to an affiliation, to have some names. And then they wanted the Arabic. So again, I asked some people I knew, and it was always listening. So I outlined the importance of the networking, because in fact, we suggest people we know. We, we already know they are valuable. We know that in most cases, they are admin. They have been there for a long time. They know the rules. So it's probably never or very rarely, but I might wait for some suggestion. And I would like to propose um, you to explain how you became a Wikipedian residence. And who are you? Ah, who are you? OK, hello, everyone. So sorry in advance, my English is not that good. <laughs> uh, my name is Mikael. I'm 21. And I'm a uh, Wikimedia in residence in France, in France. So uh, what do you want? I explain my how, how do I become. How did that happen? What, what a, was the path to that's be, a get good there? Good question. <laughs> so um, it, uh, it's and I'm giving the, the microphone at the same time to yeah. another person. We might at the same time. <laughs> Maybe I can help because yeah, uh, <laughs> actually I think that there was seven residency in France and they were all public like a normal job. Yeah. So you see it in the newspaper or whatever and you answer. Which is strange because I saw afterwards some people applying and I was like, oh, they're not even... They don't know what is Wikimedia. <laughs> you think it's Wikipedia with a P mistaken by an M. So maybe it's not a good idea, but in France, it was always the same. Uh, uh, it is it when they publish the offer, uh, most of them, at least the three where Michael is and we'll talk after. Uh, and Charlotte is just behind me. That's why you are <laughs> <laughs> He's helping from Wikimedia France, so maybe she can talk better than me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, um, who I am? Uh, I'm Charlotte. I work for Wikimedia France, and I'm the, in the shadow of the residents. Uh, we have a no. Here, it's okay. <laughs> We have a partnership with uh, gov French government, and uh, residents are in an uh, institution who do, um, I don't know the word for formation, um, training. training, thank you. Well, training for uh, researchers, students, or P from PhD, and a librarian in a university. And um, we do um, an employee with, uh, oh, sorry, I don't have it. good English. <laughs> Um, come on, yeah. Yeah, but uh, um, ce qui s'est passé, c'est qu'il y avait eu donc du coup une. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so really sorry. <laughs> There was. Donc on a eu de. C'était pas prévu, donc du coup je suis. Uh, ah. <laughs> Ça va. Qui oui, oui, oui. Ce qui s'est passé, c'est qu'on a eu euh, une proposition de la part des urfis. Donc, les urfis sont des institutions 
euh, de formation euh, auprès euh, des, donc, comme je disais tout à l'heure, tout ce qui est université, donc à la fois les chercheurs, les bibliothécaires, les étudiants, pour proposer des formations sur les projets Wikimedia pour qu'ils puissent être utilisés dans le cadre de la science ouverte et mettre en avant euh, donc, euh, bah, la recherche française. Dans ce to summarize, <laughs> I am a professional translator, you know that. Uh, to summarize, they Wikimedia France was contacted by Urfist. Urfist is a, a network of organization, mm. roughly. <laughs> okay, yeah, that this this. It's not the good one. <laughs> yeah, and they actually propose. They are that's public institution. They propose some training for, in particular, in the sector of research and 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 universities. So they contacted Wikimedia France to propose. Well, but that, no, no. Pour avoir un partenariat, du coup, pour faire en sorte que pendant euh, un an, pour, euh, dans, les, dans six urfistes, il puisse y avoir euh, donc, une personne. Euh, voilà, okay. un Wikimedia en résidence pour pouvoir proposer des formations et ouais. aussi euh, des outils euh, pour euh, aider les personnes à euh, prendre en main les outils Wikimedia, enfin les outils Wikimedia ouais. pour les utiliser dans le cadre de la science ouverte. Ok, so typically the example, that was the example of, uh, you suggested, these were contracts for one year that was suggested as part of partnership with Wikimedia France for one Wikipedian or six Wikipedian residents in six different urfists. So then there was a publication of the call and there were some people who answered to the call and some people got the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. What am I doing? The first uh, few months, how's life? The first few months, Uh, not a lot. <laughs> I discovered the university um, because there's this is a complex world. So I I was a student, but I never saw the other side, and that's a, that's not the same. <laughs> so <laughs> it was the time to send emails, to take contact, ah. to uh, prepare. And uh, sorry, yeah. And after that, yeah. to make a program, a program to uh, to make trainings for everyone, so to cover all all the subjects, yeah. all the yeah. And um, so the and introduction in the sector is not not always so easy. Sometimes it's complicated because you do not know at all the... Well, yeah. typically we might take the example uh, of, of UN. It's a very different world from the Wikipedia yeah. world, right? Um, <laughs> so it's a bit unexpected. So Sometimes you don't know well the Wikimedian world and come from the university. That was uh, another people. And sometimes you don't know well the university world, but you know the Wikimedian world. So it always um, it's a work every time you have to discover yeah. one of the both world yeah. uh, how did you come to become a wikipedian yourself how did it work okay i'm johanna Jarnen from finland and i have been a wikipedian for 15 years and i have been publicly dreaming about being a wikipedian and res resident And who of you considers yourself a geek? Yeah. Yes, so I thought that uh, Wikipedians are typically geeks. So I have been uh, telling the geek women in Finland United. They have a Facebook group. So every uh, spring there is this women in red uh, competition in Finnish Wikipedia. So I have yeah. been telling that, that okay, You, as a geek, why don't you uh, start contributing to Wikipedia and so on, and telling that uh, how these are progressing, that now we have this many females here, and so on. So I had a dream, and in the audience there are two ladies who could uh, stand up, maybe. <laughs> they had also a dream, and they are art researchers, and they were dreaming about starting a Wikipedia project. And then we were in the same Facebook group and that's how we made the application together and we got 
funded for two years, and we have started in January. And it was 15 years ago? No, this year. This but, year? But Sorry. I, I have been in Wikipedia this for year. 15 years. So now you're three of you? We are four. Okay. Four, four of you, okay. So what about the people over there? Any comment? University of Edinburgh and uh, Wikimedia Italy, and Eric. Okay, who wants to make a comment? <laughs> <laughs> Co I, s some random comment. No, I'm <laughs> I, I succeeded uh, Nemo as a Wikipedia in residence, so for the last eight years, uh, I'm working professionally as a Wikipedia in residence, and uh, now I, I'm in the staff of Wikimedia Italia. So in this case, in our country, all projects are nearly centralized, we can say. I'm not the only Wikipedia in residence, but uh, I think as we are speaking about evolution of this role of not necessarily profession, uh, it's, it, it is no more the main uh, model for Glam collaborations in Italy. We searched for other ways to involve uh, organized cultural organizations, uh, such as uh, making content, call, and so on. So sometimes we uh, we we, gi uh, we give money. Sometimes we ask for money, depending on the uh, um, uh, dimension of the organization. Uh, we search to re redistribute it to uh, small uh, cultural organizations, small museums, for example, and so on. So uh, I think we experimented a, a lot of um, uh, possible things because the Wikipedia in residence is, uh, works mainly on big organization. But uh, for example, in Italy, most of the museums are very small. No, so we we cannot ignore them. So uh, we uh, give them some money to create some simple projects, and we give them a tutor uh, that is nearly a, a small uh, uh, Wikipedia in residence. <laughs> so it, it's that very interesting. Very much like the Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not no, they are not independent and generally not hired. Uh, um, directly from uh, the organization, even, even if it is theoretically possible, of course. Um, because I think uh, it's better for the independence. If I'm not an employee of a library or a museum, uh, I, I, I have not a problem to risk to violate uh, uh, some guidelines of the community because they ask me hard they I they I want to make I had to make the biography of the uh, director of the museum or so on and also the in another then another uh, interesting thing and and that uh, I'm the first Wikipedia in residence in university in Italy and uh, uh, it's a very interesting thing uh, of course, uh, Wikipedians collaborated with the university worldwide for a long time, but it, in Italy it's the first time we have a, a formal role of uh, a Wikipedian in residence. Of course, mm, universities has uh, museums, libraries, and archives inside, but uh, in my case, the most important thing, really, I'm a tutor for many uh, training uh, seminaries for... Uh, any any kind uh, of course <laughs> in in the university. Thank you very much. Salvador wants to say something, and I, then I would like to hear Andrew. Yeah, welcome back, Andrew. <laughs> About tools, but let's hear Salvador first. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah. my name is Salvador. As like um, Florence has said, I am uh, a personal resident uh, for the World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, something that I want to bring uh, to the table is that uh, maybe I am the only uh, Wikipedia in residence, not only in Mexico, but only in the whole Latin America currently. And that for me is quite significant that maybe we need to make some adaptation of the model of Wikipedia in residence 
um, for the global south. I'm amazed that most of you are from Europe and, nor and uh, North America, but only me, it's from Latin America. Something is happening that the Wikipedia residence is not working for the uh, uh, for global south institutions. In the, in the case of Latin America, I, I believe there are two, two, two main uh, sources of that problem. First is maybe the internal uh, narratives and, and rules of Spanish Wikipedia that sometimes is kind of picky with the, the, this idea of conflict of interest that uh, maybe it's quite related with the, the, with the role of a Wikipedia of <coughs> residents. And also because the uh, Latin American institutions, museums and universities and so on, maybe are not so aware of this figure, or maybe they are they do they don't have enough money to pay a Wikipedia residence. And even for example, in my case that I'm not working for a Latin American institution, I'm working for an international institution, and it's quite also significant. So uh, 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 something that arises uh, in my mind uh, about how you see yourself as Wikipedia in residence. In my case, I see my role uh, like a mediator of the, content, the, of the contents of the institution to my whole community of my language community, in this case, the Spanish community. I'm taking all the contents that uh, uh, WIPO has in order to, uh, to enrich the content for my community. I'm not watching it like uh, something that the organization wins, but my community does. So maybe it's uh, it's quite important also because it comes from my context, from my uh, global soul context that maybe is quite different from yours. That's all. Thank you very much. I must say we are blessed in our case because number one, WIPO has adopted CC BY. So it's, uh, we don't have to fight and explain them. So it's super comfortable. And uh, everything they publish is in six languages. No, not all reports, but many of the reports are in six languages. So it's, we do some training, but we do also a lot of article integration, content inc increase. So it's a little bit different from many Wikipedia residents. But we have stuff which is already available in our language, which is comfortable. We are lucky with that. And Drew, since you are back, Maybe you can give us a little insight about the stool story because last year when we had uh, this session uh, in Singapore, there was a moment where we were pointing out that many of the tools that we use to do some reporting in particular and to prove the impact of the work we do uh, were broken. So it was getting very complicated. There were some institutions decided to stop working with us because we couldn't prove what we were actually doing on the paper. So. What's the situation this year? Is it better, worse, same? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so tell us. Uh, thanks, folks. And sorry, I wasn't here for the first part. But how many people here have had either a technical challenge or a tool challenge affect your work this year or block be a blocker to your work? OK. So um, yes, unscientific, but certainly not surprising. So I'm glad Florence brought up. The fact that we did have a similar panel last year in Singapore, and I want to make sure to tell you folks, it matters to have these kinds of forums. Um, in fact, when I was going to Singapore last year, we had already a basket of concerns around things like Paddy Pan being unreliable, or some of the Magnesis tools, which are awesome, but sometimes are not as bulletproof or reliable at times that one would want, or not knowing the state of structured data on commons, which a lot of you might have had plans for working with structured data and then were unsure about the future of those tools, whether it's query service or uh, support for new things going forward. So I wanted to say that you know when I arrived in Singapore, we had these baskets of concerns, but then I talked to Florence, and she had issues with the ESA tool. And I talked to someone else, and, they had another, and these are all tools I had not even thought of yet. So we start to collect these stories, and then, as Florence said, at the end of the session, of Wikimania 2023, Mike Dixon said a, a very powerful quote saying, if we don't address these tool and tech issues, the role of Wikimedia residents may go away. Because we had tangible stories of people who did not get funding for the next year because these metrics tools broke and they couldn't show any significant metrics to their employer or they couldn't move forward on a project that they were planning, right? So the good news, I think, is I think very much as a result of that 
Wikimania session and feedback to the foundation, they did fund a project for 2024 that I'm working on right now. So if you've been to either the GLAM um, pre-conference day or in our earlier session on user stories, um, they did fund the project through the Smithsonian in the United States called GLAM CSI. And the CSI part you might recognize. Um, we chose CSI first and said, what could CSI stand for? Contributor Study Initiative, but you probably know CSI stands for something else as well. So we said, let's do a serious study of the tools uh, and let's survey our community. How many people here have participated in the GLAM CSI survey that I sent out at some point? Oh, so we have more victims if we want to get more data. At that. But thank you for the folks who did send back that survey. But we got over 50 respondents, and the goal of this is to actually get hard data behind some of the anecdotal data we were giving the foundation about people getting frustrated by certain tools or not being able to get their job done. And even though we had you know, only, it's still quite a bit, 50 some responses, people were very exhaustive and detailed with the free responses about why do you participate in GlamWiki projects? What are some obstacles in your participation? And those results are in the midterm report. So if anyone wants to look at this, it's in Meta. If you just Google GLAM CSI or search for GLAM CSI as in crime scene investigation or contributor study initiative, you will find the midpoint report. And then I'm sure, Michelle, uh, we're going to be putting out more outputs from the GLAM day. We already have a little bit of a write-up in the newsletter. But we um, had a great day. Where we What's that? Uh, dip post. Oh, yes, we have a dip post, post on dip. pending. Yes. So we'll have the outputs of that where we did a lot of brainstorming around the tools and how we might improve them or what challenges we faced. Um, so I think that's a pretty good wrap up of a year's worth of impact from last year's Wikimania, which gives us a little bit of hope that uh, these can be addressed. So hopefully, when we get the list of the tools and how people are using them and how much. Um, they're critical to people's work, we can now say, let's make a plan to support them better or to improve them or to fix them because we actually have hard data that shows this is critical to our work. That's it. Exactly. With that, our time is over. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. But we there's it again time tomorrow afternoon to continue talking about the, the Wikipedia residence topic, so do not hesitate to show up with Connor. Uh, and uh, sorry about that. You, 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 you hate me here. No. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, let's move on. <laughs> Thank you.